Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this meeting of Eastern Area Planning Committee. I'm Councillor Graham Pass, Chairman of Committee. Uh, other members of the committee are Councillors Alan Law, uh, Jeremy Cotton, I haven't seen actually. Uh, oh, I. Councillor Tony Linden, Alan Macro, Ross McKinnon, Jeff Mays, Richard Somner, and Keith Woodhams. I have the following officers in attendance, in attendance to keep us on the straight and narrow. Bob Dre, Team Leader, Development Control. Michael Butler, the Principal Planning Officer, who will be presenting the item this evening. Uh, Gareth Dowding on Zoom, the Principal Engineer, Traffic and Road Safety. Beth Varco, on to my left from Legal Services, Jess Bayliss from Democratic Services, and Tom Dunn, the Zoom host. Now, before we start proceedings, I'd like to explain, for the benefit of members of the public who may be watching, that tonight's meeting is being held both over Zoom and with councillors present in the meeting room. Representatives making a presentation to the committee have been encouraged to do so remotely via Zoom, but there is one in attendance in person who is equally welcome. The meeting is now being live streamed on YouTube, so members of the public are able to follow proceedings. May I please ask everyone present at the meeting area to make sure that they have the microphone placed as much in front of them as possible, and ask you to make sure that you speak directly into it. Uh, the one thing, of course, I will remind you is when it comes to a vote, I will ask you to vote uh, by hand. But if you could put that your hand up in front of the uh, camera on your laptop, I'd be grateful so everyone can see it. Now, if we hear the evacuation alarm this evening, we must leave the building immediately. Please proceed via the safe uh, emergency exit route, which will be shown to us by our trained officers who are present. Please follow any instructions given by the officers. The assembly point is the Newbury Station multi-storey car park. Anyone requiring assistance down the stairs will be assisted accordingly by the trained officers. Do members have any questions about the way in which this meeting will be conducted before we proceed? Uh, you're all old hands at it now, aren't we? Well, we, aren't we? Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, apologies for absence. I gather uh, Councillor Cotton is an apology. Yes, so no further apologies. No further That's apologies. Sure. Thank you very much. Now, members, minutes. Uh, the minutes we were hoping to have circulated before the meeting will now come. Uh, the meeting from the meeting of the 9th of March will be circulated at the next agenda. Sorry, your microphone here being switched on me. Sorry, which is one of the quiet. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, members, declarations of interest. And if I may start with Chairman's privilege, uh, I am, of course, the ward member for this application. Uh, I do know a lot of the people, uh, including the applicant and some a lot of those who are objecting to it. I have not predetermined this application. I will try to speak with an even hand before asking for your opinion for debate. Uh, so if I could ask for that to be noted, please. So without further ado, let us go to application 210222, Middlewood, Hatch Lane, Chapel Row. And Michael Butler, would you please introduce the report? Thank you, Chairman. As you'll see, the application site is at Middlewood in Chapel Row, which is part of the AONB. As I'm sure you're aware, we all did the site visit last Wednesday. The application is made under Section 73 of the 1990 Town and Country Planning Act to vary uh, or remove conditions five and six of the permission number 212398 full. That application uh, allowed for a biomass boiler and a 40 foot log drying container to be erected on the site, which as you'll see from the site visit is already now working on site. The conditions in question to be removed relate to the Neil importation of lumber to the site and six, uh, a condition relating to uh, benzo apyrene disposal within the resultant ash from the, the wood burning. The reason the application has come to committee is because the officer recommendation is to approve subject to conditions and the council has received in excess of 10 objections. <coughs> 
Just by way of introduction on page six of the agenda sheet uh, one, I won't go through them in detail, but that's that those conditions there set out the existing conditions on the extant consent on the planning permission as is, and it's five and six, which we're considering tonight. <clears throat> Shall I carry on? Presumably I can. Uh, I would imagine I so at the so. moment until the <laughs> Good. Uh, as I mentioned, this application is made under Section 73 of the Town and Country Planning Act. And as I mentioned, the original permission has now been implemented on the site. If we go to the um, next slide, please, Bob. Um, that shows the detail of the application site. The red line there relates to the access from Hatch Lane to the centre of Middlewood to the west. And if you could bring up the next slide, please, Bob. This application uh, shows the red line of the whole of Middlewood. It's about 60 acres, which is in the ownership of the applicant. And the application we're considering is in the centre of that site. Page seven, section two, planning history. Again, I won't go through these in any great detail. I'm sure you've read the uh, report. Uh, there's been quite a lot of history on the site and a number of the applications are what we call prior approvals, which relates to the general permitted development order. This is a forestry operation after all, and a number of a good number of the developments uh, with the suffix agric are actually prior approvals and have been permitted development under the GPDO. This application, of course, is not uh, permitted development. Three procedural matters, that's all self-explanatory. In terms of consultations, Bucklebury Parish Council, um, if I can put it politely, they're sort of standing, standing on the line in the middle, as it were. BPC has offered both objection and no objection to the applications in the past. Um, they are generally supportive of local businesses. Um, they think the condition should be defined and interpreted such that no lumber can be imported purely for drying within the biomass boiler and so on. I won't go through their <coughs> response in detail, but they do make a number of detailed comments, particularly in relation to Condition five, five. Highways, I think, is um, is significant. They are raising no objection to the removal of condition five specifically on the basis that the level of lumber lorries into the site do not exceed one week per maximum, i.e. 52 per calendar year. And uh, if it's agreed by committee at that level, it is certainly not sufficient to justify a recommendation of refusal on highway safety grounds. Finally, um, well not finally, but almost finally, in relation to condition six, environmental health, uh, are raising no objections to the condition being removed entirely, because although the purpose of the condition is still legitimate, uh, the Environmental Health Office has noted that the applicant now has a waste exemption certificate from the Environment Agency, who are the other controlling body for the control of benzopyrene on the off-site, I should say, and therefore the risk will be managed in a responsible way. In terms of public representations, we have received 17 objections since the application was registered. The details of the objections are set out in paragraph 4.2. The vast majority of these relate to condition five and the traffic movements. Section five, planning policy. <coughs> Before I do that, I'll just, can you go to the next slide, people, of the drying container, and that's the plan of, of the drying container, and the next slide, which is the photograph of that just that members are aware of what it is. And the next one, photo of the biomass boiler, which is in operation as well. So that's what we're considering as it were. Planning policy is set out in section five and then six sets out the appraisal. The decision-making con context is under section 73. That explains the, the legal background to section 73, section 73 in the 1990 act and its purpose. 
if, just to be clear, if, for example, the committee refuse this application tonight, the original permission will still remain in place, of course. Um, so that's important for you to remember. In terms of policy context on page 13, uh, the NPPF notes that significant weight should be placed on the need to support economic growth and productivity. However, in paragraph 85 of the framework, uh, it also notes that um, development should not have an un unacceptable impact on local roads and exploits any opportunities to make a location more sustainable. Turning to um, our own core strategy policy, CS10 is very relevant because that specifically relates to supporting the rural economy. Policy ADPP5 specifically relates to the protection of the A, O and B, particularly the open downland. This site is not open downland, but of course it's still a very valuable landscape in the A, O and B. Then we move to the next page, 614, the expansion and adaptation of rural businesses. As I mentioned earlier, initial developments on this site largely related to permitted development rights corresponding to forestry operations as defined in the GPDO. Since then, um, there's no doubt that there has been expansion and intensification of this business, uh, particularly under 16.3176 full, uh, where a mobile home for uh, the forestry use specific to the applicant for living in was approved. Uh, it's important for members to note that the importation of lumber was occurring at that time. So that's 2016. Moving on from that to the highways and amenity aspects, which relate specifically to condition five, whether it's removed or not. Um, the applicant in his original supporting statement for the original application, which coincidentally I was the case officer for, uh, the statement says that only about five to six larger lorry loads of lumber are imported to the site in a year. Well, I have to be honest, as case officer, uh, I took that at face value <laughs> and clearly it's not correct. Um, unquestionably, and members should need to bear this in mind, there have been many, many movements of lumber into the site. And whilst on this presentation we haven't shown all the photographs of movements from a number of local residents, there are two at the end, but I, I do have a log of a significant number of movements. So members do need to bear that in mind. Sometimes it's um, apparently been three to four a week. I don't think that level is being maintained at the moment, but members do need to be aware of that. So clearly that planning supporting statement was incorrect for the original application. However, following negotiations with the applicant of this application, this current application, written agreement, and it's on the file, has been obtained that no more than one HGV lumber delivery will be made per week to the site, i.e. 52 per year. And we consider as officers um, that that is controllable uh, and monitorable um, in terms of, uh, well, I'll say potential enforcement if it should come to that. And on that basis, um, we consider, along with the highways officer who, who is not objecting to the application, that um, with that new varied condition imposed, i.e. not the deletion of five, but the variation of five, the application will be acceptable. But before I turn to the final recommendation, uh, we need to consider condition six, benzo a pyrene. The reason this um, condition was placed on or recommended by the Environmental Health Officer was because apparently incomplete combustion of organic matter can create benzopyrene and this can be in high concentrations carcinogenic and ash of course is a fertiliser and it, if it's spread on agricultural fields off-site, clearly off-site not on-site, that can be a problem. Hence in the original application that condition was applied now the environmental health officer is saying because that control is under a different um, uh, statutory body, there is no need for the planning system to duplicate other regular, regulatory regimes. Before I come to the planning balance and conclusion, I'd just like to go through the um, 
site photos on the presentation. If you could carry on through, please, Bob. So this is the, for those of you who haven't been able to visit the site, this is the access into the site looking west from Hatch Lane with two, an existing dwelling on the right. Next slide, please. This is the view looking north along Hatch Lane. So you'll show that, see that the width is pretty narrow for wide vehicles. The width alignment and so on is, is, not, is not wonderful by any means. Next slide, please. This is the view south along Hatch Lane where it dips down and a, a much longer distance down towards the, the A4. <clears throat> Next one, please, Bob. This is a view of the yard and the tractor uh, in the site. I believe um, tractor movements do go out of the site with lumber on various occasions. Next. Storage barn, which is permitted. Next. Again, another photo of the yard. The yard again. So there are a number of buildings now on the site. I hasten to add they are all permitted either by application or through the GPDO. Next one, Bob. This is the biomass burner and the stack in position. Wood store um, where lumber is stored, um, I believe, uh, after drying. This is a photo of a lorry exiting the site um, and it looks as if it's turning right eye to the south. And the last one, this is a not such a good photo, but it's a photo of a lumber lorry entering the site. I will say that these photographs have been on the uh, access site for um, a number of months now, actually. So turning to the recommendation, well, before I do so, I should have said apologies that on the update sheet, there is actually no update. So nothing's happened since the report was written. Members will need to consider the representations and concerns raised by the objectors are understood and of course are considered entirely legitimate planning considerations. Rural businesses by their very presence and character do have an impact on the local area, not always welcomed. However, the corollary of that is that uh, local and national policy do encourage local rural businesses since they provide local employment, employment and sustain local services. <clears throat> And it's considered that with the specific control on lumber movements, uh, as you'll see on the agenda sheet, the application is acceptable and the removal of condition six is also acceptable. And therefore the, through the Service Director of Development and Regulation, we are asking that uh, conditional permission be granted to this section 73 application. Thank you, Chairman. I'm happy to take any questions. Right. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Uh, as always, members, if you could make a note of any questions that arise from that presentation, and we will take them to the planning officer after all the public speakers have spoken. So um, if I could ask, please, when Councillor John Brims from Bucklebury Parish Council is online. I see he's getting there. Right, Councillor Brims, can you hear us? Oh. Can you hear me now? Oh, that's perfect. We see you and we hear you. Good. Right, Great. welcome. Uh, you know the score. You've been with us before. You have up to five minutes. Can I assist you with any timekeeping? Uh, I should be done fairly quickly, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. But please remain online uh, for any questions members may have after you've said your piece. Okay, no problem. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm representing Buckley Parish Council. Uh, I'd like to say that we are pleased to see the recommendation from West Bartsch Council Planners is for the variation of uh, Condition 5 and to replace it with a more reasonable restriction of the one HGV delivery per week to the site that will allow the applicant to carry on with his business, but also alleviate some of the concerns of the residents along Hatch Lane. We think it needs to be made clear in the interest of all parties that the description of an HGV is a large lumber lorry and for the avoidance of doubt does not include the applicant's tractor and trailer, which are also used for moving lumber. 
We are pleased to see that the concerns of the residents of Hatch Lane have been taken into account. The residents along Hatch Lane clearly have legitimate concerns over the traffic to and from this site, particularly during times when school children are walking to and from the bus stops at Chapel Row. The council would encourage the applicant to avoid movement during these times and also use social media to communicate when large lorry HGV movements are likely to occur. The parish council has been supportive of local businesses and this site is no exception. In respect of this site, the parish council has offered both objection and no objection to the applications in the past. So we think we have taken a balanced view. The count Parish Council could not understand why Condition 5 was ever imposed, pu imposed purely in relation to the approval of the biomass boiler and at application 212398, when there were no previous importation of timber restrictions imposed on any application. That said, we are pleased the solution has been agreed by West Barch Council with the applicant that is capable of being enforced and hope the residents of Hatch Lane see it as a reasonable compromise given the history of the site and so not to damage the business of the applicant. That is my piece. Oh, oh thank you very much. Very efficiently done. Councillor Law has a question for you. Councillor Law. Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brims. It's, uh, <clears throat> my question actually arises with, you, you commented that there needs to be a distinction between HGVs and tractors. Uh, and I'm conscious when I read your uh, your report and your comments that uh, we're referring to tractors and trailers coming in, but it's not clear to me how many. Can you help us? I mean, it, it is because tractors, in fact, the tractor I saw on site is is a sizable beast, and um, with a trailing a trailer with lumber on it, and I know from what the applicant told us when we were on the site visit, he actually is bringing in lumber from not too far away, but he's doing it. But there's nowhere here, I may have to ask the officers as well, there's nowhere I can find which says he's doing this once a day, three times a day, once a week, whatever. Can you guide me, please? Can you give me some help? I personally don't know the answers to that question. Um... I do believe the movements of the tractor and trailer are greater than the HGVs, but I don't know that the quantity or you know, how many movements there are per week. What I do understand from the business is that there will be more movements at certain times of the year than others, but that's uh, purely related to when uh, lumber is available in the local area. Chairman, I think the decision tonight hinges around some of these volumes and I'd like them clarify perhaps with the officers later on. Uh, well, we can certainly do that, Councillor Law, and indeed the objectors may add to your knowledge. I don't know. Uh, members, any other questions for Councillor Brims? Oh, Councillor McKinnon. Yeah, thanks, Chairman. Uh, hi, Councillor Brims. Um, just, just, just building on what Councillor Law said there, you, you mentioned that we should make a distinction between the, the tractor and the trailer and the HGVs. Uh, my question to you is, and it's a genuine question, I don't know the answer, is why? Um, the tractor is pretty sizable, and I would imagine the, the, sort of the, the speed of movement of the tractor is also pretty sort of cumbersome and, and lumbering, really. So why does the tractor not have the impact on the roads as an HGV would? Well, I, I think it's, um, if you look at the definition of an HGV, then it is actually a lorry. Um, so I think they need, what, I, what I'm really getting at is to making sure that we don't end up in a problem in the future uh, because uh, the definition is not clear of what the movements actually are allowed and are not allowed. Okay, thanks, Chairman. Yep. Okay, thank you. We, again, we can explore that with officers. Any other members, any other questions? I'm looking at Zoom hands, I'm looking at actual hands. Councillor Brims, thank you very much. We next come to uh, a spokesperson for the objectors, Mrs. Anne Athors. Very good evening to you, Mrs. Athors. Can you hear us? Hello, yes. Uh, can oh, you we, hear we me can okay? hear you. Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Now, Hello. you have up to five minutes. Can I assist you with any timekeeping? Um, I, just, I just had a whole paragraph 
here on uh, the HGV subject. Okay. And obviously I didn't know that questions were going to be asked about that. Um, so I'll just carry on and include it. Um, and um, just very briefly to say that um, I gave uh, traffic logs both to Bucklebury Parish Council um, and to West Parks right. via Michael can, Butler. Can, can, I just, can I just stop you just for one second? If yes, I, of course. If you're talking after four minutes, I'll tell you you've got a minute to go. I, I want to start the stopwatch if you wish to speak. Oh, yes. But Sorry, I thought you, you, I thought you meant you, that, no, something different. I'm trying to Sorry. assist you with timekeeping so you don't run out of time. That, that was uh, thank point. you, Graham. Yeah, OK. A pleasure. Right. So uh, you have up to five minutes. Please remain online for any questions members may have for you. And I I'll say your time starts now and off you go. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I would like to express the huge disappointment and concern of myself and other Hatch Lane residents to the response within the committee report to the application to remove condition five, which appears to be overly biased in its support of one resident's business over consideration of the 90 or so families who also live either directly or indirectly on Hatch Lane. Quite how nil import of lumber can become no more than one HGV delivery of lumber in any given week is incomprehensible, given that within the case officer's November report was the statement, poor immediate road access to the site via Hatch Lane and reason for condition five in the interest of protecting highway safety and local amenity. Residents raise significant concerns at the obvious increase in traffic, particularly heavy, to which vehicles in relation to Middlewood have contributed and written evidence of this across 2021 was provided. Why then would the committee feel it acceptable to recommend an even greater lumber importation? Has the highways officer actually walked Hatch Lane at busy times, particularly the stretch uphill towards the junction at Blaybone Inn, where it narrows significantly with nowhere for the pedestrians to go? Has he arranged to observe the width, height and weight of the huge articulated timber lorries loaded to the gunnels with lumber? Has he then stood in the narrow stretch of Hatch Lane and imagined one driving down it and turning in from the poor immediate road access to the site via Hatch Lane? In January 2017, the then case officer Andrew Heron, Graham Pask and Buckleby Parish Council were informed of huge articulated lorries full of lumber going into Middlewood, one of them causing damage to trees, hedging and one property's telephone cable. Yes, Hatch Lane is an unrestricted highway. However, it is, as it's always been, a rural lane, never widened nor pavements added. Through various planning applications, one part retrospective and one fully retrospective, the business in question has been allowed to develop and intensify without considering that Hatch Lane does not provide suitable access. If a planning application were submitted now for the business in its current size, intensity and resultant traffic flow, would it be granted? What constitutes an HGV? The applicant has always used his tractor and trailer in addition to articulated lorries to import lumber. Please see photos previously provided as these are not small trailers. Will he argue that a tractor and trailer is not an HGV and continue to use this method of importation too, thus further increasing heavy traffic? Despite Bucklebury Parish Council suggesting that an agreement be reached with the applicant and residents of Hatch Lane in conjunction with West Berkshire Council regarding lumber movements, none of us has been approached about this. We certainly haven't been approached, and yet the access to Middlewood from Hatch Lane is directly opposite our home. Greater numbers of lumber deliveries into Middlewood potentially means greater amounts of timber products going out together with greater number of vehicles coming into the site to pick up orders and delivery trucks going out to deliver them as the business continues to expand. Has the committee considered this additional business traffic? Surely management of woodland moving to the addition of wood importation in order to support business expansion is a change of use of land. Concerns were raised in the past by Buckleby Parish Council as to whether a wood of 60 acres could provide enough income to sustain someone living on site. One minute the left. Has, the owner has openly said recently he has to import wood in order to run his business. 
There is no condition other than documents relating to the change of use of land to residential to stop the site being sublet to other businesses, such as Sayers Tree Services, who kept their machinery and went to and from that site for some time. Finally, I hope you will consider that your decision will affect not just my family, but the other 90 or so families who live on Hatch Lane. Thank you. And I've cut, I have cut it. You've done very well with your timing. Well done. Thank you. Councillor McKinnon has a question for you. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, good evening, Mrs. Athos. Uh, thanks for your, uh, for your statement. Just, just one question to you, really. Um, what, what's your assessment of the difference between the impact on local roads of tractor and, tra tractor and trailer movements and HGV movements? Um, would you say the inconvenience is, is worse with the HGV or, or, or worse with the tractor and trailer? Just what, what's your assessment of that? Well, um, my assessment um, that I put into logs that I gave to Michael Butler and also to um, John Brims, Buckleberry Parish Council, um, lists the number of tractor and trailers and lorries that come in. And I would say it's both, really. The tractor and trailer is not small. It's quite a sizable trailer packed with logs. Um, and that comes um, on one of the days I've put four times a day on one day back in um, January. Uh, last year, February, there were five one day. Um, so, you know, they're coming and going, they're heavy, they're noisy. Um, and then you get the huge, huge articulated lorries of lumber, um, which come down. I mean, you've got letters of objection where people have driven up, what my neighbour in particular, and has had to reverse all the way back because the logs on the uh, trailer, are, on the lorry are coming down. We're talking of a, a village lane here that's obviously been here forever. Um, and now it's having the expansion of the business in the woods, I'm sure must surely have gone beyond management of woodland um, because it's actually bringing in wood rather than making its living from the wood that's within the 60 acres and that was always questioned by Bucklebury Parish Council. I've got a number of documents that, that state the different questions they asked. So sorry I've probably embroidered that a bit but it's um, it's all true. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Law. Thank you again Chairman. Ms. Uh, uh, I, I'm actually trying to get the volume in my mind. Now you've quoted tractors. One day you said four tractors a day. Another day you said five tractors per day. But is this one day per month? Yeah. No. Then no. I did. I didn't okay, say per day. Can I just finish day. my question? Can I just oh, finish my course. question? Oh, of course. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. trying to make this nice and easy for both myself and everyone else. I'm sorry. How many tractor movements per week have you recorded? Well, um, I can't tell you that because I haven't added them up, but they are here. They're on the, the West Barts portal and have been available since January. Um, everything is in here. This is 2021. It lists all the lorry movements, all the tractor movements and lots of other vehicles in between, which show the flow of traffic. So if I could, if Chairman, if I may ask a probe a little bit more, is, is, it, is it every day a tractor? No, not every day. So two or three, is it two or three times it, a week? It, I don't know. It, it does vary. Okay. It, it really varies. Yeah, I understand. If, if you've got that all there and the officers have it, Chairman, I would like an actual number, an average number of tractor movement yeah. per week. Right, just, just to be helpful, I did just turn around to Mr. Butler. He does have the log and I'm sure yes. he's doing mathematics <laughs> right now so you can ask him when it comes to questions for officers thank you so, chairman. right my pleasure uh councillor macro thank you mr chairman i was going to ask a similar question about hgvs you know, how frequently do hgvs visit the site at the moment and uh, do we have to refer that to mr butler as well oh well, let's, let's well, ask I, things first I, I was just going to say, again, it's all mentioned in here and I even put it all in red for um, the officers and as I, they've had them since um, January. Um, and we we did see um, a couple of articulated lorries go in at least after um, the condition was put in. So the, the movements went on for a while. It's been quiet in recent weeks, which has been lovely. Thank you. 
Right. Well, I'm going to ask a question as well. There's been a lot of talk uh, of HGVs, of which they don't seem to be very numerous, uh, tractors and trailers, which seem to be more so. Can you give any clue as to smaller vehicles, such as vans going out for deliveries uh, and any other vehicles that may be accessing the site? I can do. And I'm sorry if I hesitate in my reply, Graham. I, I probably rather naively thought that everybody would have had access or seen the logs. So therefore, I haven't done any prior meeting homework on this. Um, there are all sorts. I mean, Sayers Tree Services um, is no longer operating from that site. But in fact, it was operating um, for a long time um, until I spoke to the Bucklebury Parish Councillor. Um, who three days later at the meeting, um, we learned the arrangement was no longer in existence. But they had a sort of very large boxy truck, um, a van, uh, a chipper, uh, and that was uh, in and out every working day, plus private vehicles in association with that. All sorts of debris. There have been concrete lorries going in, heavy duty concrete lorries, and big um, sort of uh, container lorries have gone in. Basically, as I could put it in a nutshell, as the business has expanded, obviously, so too has the traffic in and out of the site, you know, going in to collect things, deliver things, people coming back out again, then you get the large articulated lorries of lumber going in. The photograph that Michael put up, I'm afraid, doesn't do it justice. That's just part of the lorry. I actually sent in photographs which show you in three different photographs the full length, we're talking mega length of a lorry here turning in. And remember that it was stated in November as a poor access to the site from Hatch Lane. Okay, well, I, and I'm sure you will be reassured that uh, members do do their homework before coming. It's just that actually it's very difficult, certainly for people like me uh, with the technology to actually bring it in front of me right now. And I confess I didn't print it out, but we do have all that information that you provided and we will question Mr. Butler. Uh, members, any other questions for Mrs. Athors? Oh, Councillor Law again, yes. Yeah, Chairman, I'd just like to add to that point uh, to reassure uh, Mrs. Atos, you know, we, we don't read every detail, but we do rely on a very comprehensive officer summary. And and I got to say, I think Ms. Atos has a point because the officer summary, if he's got all the details, hasn't included the numbers. Well, I'm sure we will delve yeah. further. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Mrs. Atos? Thank you for your time. We now turn. Thank you. Okay, we now turn to the um, applicant, Mr. Wakelin, who is actually with us. Mr. Wakelin, welcome. Please go to the dais. Now, I, I, I say the same to everybody. If I can assist you with timekeeping, it's my pleasure. Yeah. So if you're still talking at four minutes, shall I tell you you've got a minute yes, to please. go? Yeah, yeah. Please remain there. Uh, I think by the sound of it, you may get questioned. So uh, the time starts when you start talking. Yep. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm James um, from PJ Forestry. Um, I took over the business in 2012 after finishing Forestry at college. Um, so, we, uh, so we own the woodland in the family. So I sort of brought it back into management, how it's been done since sort of 1960 when we look back in the history of the woodland it's always been like a working woodlands um obviously i brought it to a state now where um i can make myself a decent living out of the woodland um as you obviously well know that the government have introduced lots of new rules into the sale of firewood um to ensure that wood is dry and burns more efficiently um with this we have recently joined woodshaw that regulates firewood supplies um and ensures that the, the fuel that we sell is dry and ready to burn. Um, with this, we've obviously had to make a decision to buy the Glen Fallow boiler and the log drying kiln, um, along with the new barn we put in last year as well to keep the firewood dry to deliver to the customers. Um, we sought planning permission uh, back in December uh, for the biomass boiler. Um, and then that was when the condition was put in place in December last year um, by West Berkshire Council uh, to restrict bringing the wood into the wood yard. Um, the council was obviously aware of us bringing the wooden since 2016, as it mentions in the report for the temporary mobile home. 
Um, we're not looking to expand the business. We're just looking to run it as we've been doing sort of successfully for the last 10 years, um, just to carry on, obviously, as we've been doing. Um, a large percentage of the wood we cut, we use comes from our site at Middlewood. Um, but we also have to bring in sort of small amounts from neighbouring woodlands and sites that we work on. Um, obviously, if it's available, then we use it to produce firewood rather than it going to waste. Um, we supply sort of many um, direct directly to domestic clients um, who use our wood for their heating, obviously living in the countryside. It's one of the only forms of heating, especially with the oil prices at the moment. Um, yeah, I've also recently taken on a young lad um, who's sort of looking to get into the industry. Obviously it's quite a hard industry to get into. Um, so obviously we need to have the work to keep him busy and keep me busy um long term uh in terms of the traffic movement um we brought in about six loads of timber over the last year um and then sort of bits um, with my timber trailer it's usually probably once or twice a week i mean some days we could be using it sort of three times a day bringing in a set amount of timber that we've purchased or cut down re sort of locally um some of the pictures that were displayed in the traffic log are of construction traffic for the barn build last year, which is not really sort of relevant to the timber lorries. It is, that's obviously that's a one-off thing, bringing in construction traffic. Um, so some of the stuff in the log as well, I don't quite agree with because some of it is like my car going in and out and things like that as well, which is not really relevant to the application. Um, all the drivers we use for the lorries are regular drivers as well, which know the site and obviously come to us regularly. Um, so I do understand that there are some tight spots up the hill, um, but obviously it's passing spaces um, and it's only a small stretch to the main road. That's sort of the best access we can use is up the hill um, rather than sort of going through on the right down to the A4. Um, the movement we add to the road is very small compared with, I mean, there's a local farm just up the road. Um, there's also um, a couple of businesses and various lorries and tractors go up and down, as you expect in the countryside, up and down that road. Um, I mean, I, I sit outside in the weekends and I can hear traffic going up and down, which is obviously not me because my machine's parked up in the yard. So it's not just me that's obviously using the road and I seem to be getting blamed for everything. Um, um, listen, there's no, I always haven't commented obviously on us um what we're doing up there they obviously know of us and what we're how we're operating one minute remaining um yeah and obviously there's no restriction on the road if there was a issue with that road they'd be putting a, a traffic or weight restriction on the road which obviously is not in place um so if this condition is not removed it obviously will be very detrimental to our business and i have to sort of look at maybe let, letting my young lad go um or sort of redeciding what we do so uh, thank you for your time any questions All right we do have Councillor Linden and Councillor Law at the moment, or Councillor McKinnon. Councillor Linden first. Yes, Chairman. Um, something that uh, Mr Wakelin mentioned, but also on page 16 of the report uh, at 8.12. Uh, when I was at the site visit, the biomass boiler was uh, having some problems, and I just want <coughs> a guarantee that it, it, that's been looked at and repaired because obviously it needs to be in maintained in good condition. Yes, it has. Yeah, yeah. It's just at uh, that point, um, we had not changed it over to the, sort of the summer settings. We had a hot day. So, of course, the water was operating at a higher temperature. But obviously, new to having this machinery, it's very complicated. I'm just sort of getting to my grips with it. But we have had um, Glenn Fallow out, and they have obviously set it all up. and It's working at an operational at the moment now. So that's all been sorted. Thank you, Chairman. I'll be asking uh, the officers, uh, um, our highway officer, Mr Dowding, some a further question later on. Thank you. Right, at the appropriate time, you're very welcome to. Councillor Law. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I've got two questions for Mr uh, Wicklin. Mr Wicklin, uh, the first question is the obvious one, because I've asked it twice already. Uh, I heard you saying you probably brought tractor loads in a couple of days a week and sometimes had two or three loads in a day. Could you, that kind of works out to me about five or six loads a week. Would you confirm that or can you give me a different figure? How, how, how many trips per week with the tractor and the lumber trailer do you make? 
Um, it's very varied because what we usually do, we, we'd buy a bit of wood, we, woodland, we'd buy it as a parcel um, and sometimes we could have nothing for months on end. I mean, we've had the last couple of months, we've had nothing at all really, we're bringing in the trailer. And then some days we go, oh, we've got three loads to move in or um, some weeks we'd have five loads to move in, but it's very varied. Um, it's really hard to put a, a number on it because it's it, every day is different. It depends on sort of what work we have in. Um, but yes, it's it's quite. That's obviously why there's no figures because it, it changes changes on obviously a weekly basis. Really, I, I think I can understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, you have accepted a condition of one HGV per week. Would you also be prepared to accept the maximum number of tractor trailers per week? Um, yes, but the only thing is, would it include me going out to jobs as well? Because I do do other jobs, and I have to take my tractor out obviously to do these jobs for customers. Um, obviously I've got to get home as well with the tractor. Would that count? I, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure where about the tractor. I think it's the tractor with the trailer and the lumber. Okay. The tractor does go out with the trailer. You see that when we go out to jobs, that's the issue. Obviously it's yeah. Is it, is it more the logs on the trailer then? Is it so? Well, no, no, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know that, but yeah. you've told me that. Yeah. So it's a, tr <laughs> so let me ask the question again from yeah. you. you. How often do you go out with the tractor, either with no logs on it or with logs on it? I mean, uh, it's, it's, let's just talk about tractor trailer journeys. Yes. Um, so most of the time I'm going out empty. Um, that, the Pacific yeah, yeah, trailer. I understand that, but yeah. understand that how many times, I'm trying to get a figure per week here. Yeah. On average. Um, two or three a week. So, but yeah, like some weeks I could do nothing. That's yeah. That's what, yeah. So I mean, the, yeah. So maximum two to three a week. Um, that's when we're busy. And also in the winter we do, we do maybe a bit more and in summer we couldn't do anything, might do anything for months. So. I think I understand the picture. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry, it's quite hard to explain. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Council Law, I think our officers will be able to uh, elaborate somewhat on the question you were asking uh, after the public yes, speaking. Yes, thank you, thank so, you, Joe. Thank you. Uh, uh, all this, yes, I think you will get a clearer view shortly. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do it now? It no. In well, in case there are further questions, Mr. Dre, can you assist? Yeah, Chairman, just to clarify on the movements, um, there's a distinction between the, the forestry operations aren't development they didn't require planning permission so the movements associated with that are essentially uncontrolled by the local authority the restriction um, in the condition relates purely to the importation of timber so it's serving the purpose of uh managing the movements on the road but also the intensity of the, the, the development uh, um in terms of the processing of materials so just factor that in when you're considering movements that it's purely the condition as written is purely about movements for importation not other movements that may be associated with the use chairman thank you for that I, it's an interesting one however it's, that's how the condition's written maybe it's not written correctly well uh, we are uh, able to make suggestions for amended conditions are we not uh council law i'll leave you to work on that and you still have another speaker to come who may make some points along the lines that you've been making who knows councillor mckinnon thanks chairman and i've got a couple of questions if that's all right um hi mr Wakeland. hello um, this might be a fairly obvious question, but nobody's asked it yet. Um, condition five, why was that acceptable to you in November, but not now in March? Um, it wasn't made, uh, was it, what condition says, sorry? What this, I haven't got it in front of me. So the condition we're talking about, the movements in and out, was part of the previous, the permission granted in November? Have I misunderstood what's going on? Uh, I think Mr. Butler, I, let, let Mr. Butler answer that. Yeah. I don't want to put Mr. Wakeland on the spot because he doesn't have it in front of him. Yeah. Mr. Butler, can you assist with that? I'll, I'm going to take it all out of order just for this one question. Yeah, I can assist. Um, with respect to Mr. Wakeland, I don't think he was aware that I was, uh, I, the local planning authority, were going to impose that condition. That uh, clears that up. Thank you very much, Mr. Butler. Um, another couple, um, you, you, you made a statement there about importing about six large lorry loads per year. Is that, is that correct? Yes, yeah. Um, you, might, you might have noticed in the report that at paragraph 621 that our planning officer says that this is clearly inaccurate. 
um, because evidence from local objectors has shown that movements occur on a far more regular basis. I just wonder if you had a comment on that. Uh, some of the pictures that are on there, um, especially like the one that's shown earlier, is actually my tractor and trailer. That's not a lorry. Um, and so I've, I've had a look on there and yeah, some of the pictures that they have counting as a lorry on her report are actually my tractor and trailer. Um, and some of them are not even for my yard. They, they are for up the road and stuff as well. And obviously being counted because I've just seen them driving down the road. Okay. And finally, if that's okay, Chairman, um, how many people do you employ? Um, I've got one man who is full time. Um, and my sister, who does two days a week for me. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right, looking for any other questions for Mr. Wakelin? No? no thank okay, you, Mr. Thank Wakelin. You. Which means it's my turn as ward member. And I, prom I have been promised, uh, rather, I have promised I'll time myself accurately, but uh, I'm sure people are keeping an eye on me. Uh, so I'll start now. Uh, I'm going to start by echoing what Bucklebury Parish Council wrote on page eight. This is one of the most difficult applications that BPC, and therefore I must confess I, have been asked to comment on. Um, uh, let me start by saying that this is a rural business, that of cutting up logs, drying them and selling them, mainly to people in rural areas. So where do you do this if not in the countryside? Uh, uh, so I do support local rural businesses, which this is. But I want to give you some background as to what Middlewood is. Middlewood is one of six parcels of land that uh, comprise Carbins Wood, the bigger area that was sold off in six parcels uh, about 15 years ago. It was operated prior to that by lease for, by the Forestry Commission. And those of you who attended the site visit, the two little cottages on the right as you drive in are known as, would you believe, one and two foresters cottages, where dear old Wilf Laws, who was employed by the Forestry Commission, used to live. The way he would operate was any diseased or fallen trees, he would go up with the appropriate tools, sort them out, and um, probably cut them up and give them to local people. Um, periodically, the Forestry Commission would harvest trees planted for that purpose, trees such as hemlock, which would result in a mass of activity, noisy activity, for two or three months. Uh, the wood would invariably be removed. It's being removed from Blacklands Wood, a wood backing onto Upper Bucklebury behind the Memorial Hall at the moment. That's a 10-year programme. They do it every couple of years for two to three months and then go away and peace and silence regains. So what is different now is that since this wood was, has been privately owned by Mr. Wakelin, uh, it's the, I think I'm reflecting the fears expressed by residents, um, that it's the intensification of the site. I grabbed some figures very quickly from uh, the electoral register. If you ha had gone out of the site and gone immediately right and immediately left, there is an area called Paradise Way where there are 42 houses. There are 26 houses in Hatch Lane. Halfway up Hatch Lane, if you turn right, there's Hatch Close. There's 20 houses in Hatch Close. Now, not all those houses have children attached to them who walk up to the Bladebone where the school bus would go from but a significant number do. So what I'm trying to paint a picture, and I don't have the accurate numbers, I haven't stood there and counted kids walking up and down the road, but there's a surprising amount of pedestrian activity. Uh, that linked with the increase in activity of this site is what has alarmed local people. So on the one hand, I support local businesses, especially rural local businesses that can operate in no other place than in the countryside. But the fear is how this has grown incrementally. It started off very small scale, has grown, now wood's being imported. And of course, if you import wood, you have to export wood and go and sell it around the local neighbourhood, where there are lots of glowing reports. So Mr. Wakelin's highly regarded in terms of what the product that he provides to local people. Uh, and, and I know it has a lot of support from his customers. But what is the, con the concern is, if you look on the website, that it's not just firewood, it's, it's oak posts, it's one or two other bits and pieces as well. And I, I, it just, I, I was keen for this to come to committee and please there were sufficient letters because I think the fear was becoming that 
uh, from local residents that you, you are off, most of you familiar with Barlow's Woodyard down the bottom uh, of the hill uh, near Courage, near Hermitage. And we just didn't want it expanding to that sort of level where people are coming and going all the time buying lumber for their garden, not lumber, wrong word, prepared wood for their garden, fencing and so on and so forth. So members, I'm not going to make any recommendation to you. I think it would be inappropriate, as I did declare at the beginning. I know and on one level support the applicant, but I know and on other levels support those who are, have written in and spoken against this. But I would urge you to probe deeply the volume of traffic potentially and actually that is accessing this site. I have uh, 10 seconds left. So members, thank you for listening. If you have any questions for me, now is your time. Okay. Any questions for the ward member? <laughs> well, you're going to let me off lightly. Right, members, you have a highways officer. You can probe uh, with, with for, for further information. You have our planning officer who has, I'm now uh, absolutely certain, has done the mathematics on the log that has been provided. Councillor Linden first. Thank you, uh, Chairman. I'm going to be asking Mr Dowding uh, when I went on the site visit, I drove past the site uh, and then did a uh, kind of uh, U-turn uh, at the next junction, but another fan wants to go to the same place as I was. Do you think that the signage, I know we've heard from Mr Wakelin that he has regular drivers, that it might make it more easier, especially if they have a new driver, for instance, on uh, on an HGV uh, or large vehicle, uh, to possibly have slightly better signage to the site. I know I raised it at the site visit. I know it's the countryside. I just wanted to know your professional opinion, please. Uh, Mr. Dowding, can you comment on that question potentially? Yes, I can. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would not necessarily recommend any real additional signage to this private development uh, because as an authority we are trying to remove sign clutter from the side of the highway uh, not only can it uh, be uh, intrusive within the countryside but also it's a maintenance liability uh, we would not necessarily see any harm in the applicant himself putting small flag type signs up uh, for for sort of delivery vehicles if he knows that he is expected someone who doesn't know where the site is uh, but we would strongly urge the applicant to actually ensure that his drivers are fully aware of, of where the site is most vehicles these days including hcvs and even some tractors will have a gps system so they could always give uh, a, a postcode or a location so they could use that for guidance uh, but uh, we, we certainly wouldn't want to encourage uh, additional official signage to the site uh, for sign clutter and the fact that it, it is a private development which when it when it ceases to operate we'd then have to go around and remove all that signage and possibly change permanent signs as well which would be expensive to the authority. Thank you Chairman. All right, Councillor McKinnon. Thanks, Chairman. Yeah, I'd also like to, to probe the highways officer, please, uh, Chairman. Um, uh, Mr Dowding, I'm looking at paragraph 6.21 of the report and I'm just a little bit confused and I hope you can help me uh, with this. Um, on the, the fourth line down, nevertheless, the highways officer has noted that even if there were one vehicle per day on Hatch Lane, this would not be sufficient for him to recommend refusal on highway safety ground. Um, and then at the end of that same paragraph, um, and unless movements are, for example, one per day, the refusal of planning permission could not be sustained. Now, that sounds like if it was one per day, then we could potentially sustain a, an application. Just, it seems to be self-contradictory, and I'd like some guidance on that, please. Certainly, thank you. Um, now, what, what we're saying there is that even if it was one per day, we couldn't really find a reason for refusal. But as is, they're suggesting that it's one per week, there's even less of a reason for uh, refusal. Um, when you take into consideration the existing volume of traffic along that road through existing operations from farmers and other adjacent businesses, one additional vehicle going into the site per day really is, uh, un un is, is not something that we could, uh, we could support refusal on. 
Okay, so that, that final sentence then is, is probably wrong, isn't it? That could be worded better. It, it could be worded but better, yes. The person who, who made that comment could well have, uh, yes, done okay. it ever so slightly better. But you've better. given us the, the verdict tonight, so, so thank you for yes. that. That's all right. Uh, sorry, that, is that sufficient, Councillor McKinnon? Uh, Councillor Law? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. <laughs> I think you know the question that's coming from the, uh, the planning officer. Can we can we have the numbers expressed as a kind of a, an average? I don't care how you do it, uh, average per week, an average per month, average per day. Uh, and, and I think you know, having listened to the uh, to, to Gareth, the the highways, you know, I, I personally I'm not making a distinction between an HGV and a tractor pulling a hell of a trailer that looks like an HGV. Um, so I'd, I'd be interested in the numbers, please. All right, Mr. Butler, can you assist? Yeah, I've got the printed log in front of me, Chairman. I'm afraid to say statistically it's extremely difficult to give you an exact average because if I did so, I'd be rightly criticised by a statistician. Um, because on some days, and I'll give you an example on the 8th of January, uh, and there were, I should think, um, eight to ten movements of tractors and trailers in and out of Middlewood. On the 2nd of March, for example, there were more than that. There were probably 12 movements. On other days, where they're not recorded, perhaps there were no movements at all. Um, HGVs, um, I'm afraid it's very difficult to say. What I, you may think I'm avoiding the question, I'm not. What I'm not prepared to do from this log is to give you an accurate figure because uh, it is extremely difficult to do so. Um, all I will say, the number of movements are significant on some days and zero on other days. The log is here. The log has been under public um, in the public domain since the 11th of January for all to see. So although that answer may not seem very helpful and I apologize for that, it is extremely difficult to give anything like an accurate figure because it is so variable. If it helps the members at all on some days, there is, appears to be up to 15 to 20 movements to and from the site. On other days, there are zero movements. Chairman, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Butler, for that. I think you underestimate yourself, Mr. Butler. I think it has clarified. I think we, I think we recognize the, the bumpiness of this, the irregularity. Uh, it's, it's a matter of, I think it comes down to uh, the fact that when I read this and was on the site visit, I was understood we were talking about eight, I, I, per, perhaps one HGV a week. And, uh, and it didn't seem to be an awful lot to me. But but when I suddenly realized that we were talking about tractors pulling uh, logs, uh, lumber, large large logs, large pieces of lumber, uh, you know, that's the same effect as an HGV practically. Uh, and we appear to be ignoring that. So my next question is, could we, in your professional opinion, be able to change the condition that we that you recommended to something along the lines of um, maximum number of journeys into site carrying lumber, whether by an HGV or a tractor trailer in any given month. I'm not sure what the number might be, um, but, could, but if you could agree that in principle, I think I personally would be happy for you to sit down with the applicant and agree a number maximum per month. I'm going to have to defer to Mr. Dre here, but my understanding is the committee must consider the application as is presented to them tonight. My understanding is we can put an amendment in. Yeah. Well, I'll defer to Mr. Yeah. Dre then. Because uh, Mr. Dre, can you yeah. help? Yes. I think the key thing I'd like to stress is that obviously it's an ex there's a forestry operation that is happening on the site. So there will be movements associated with that which have never been and are not in the control of this. The, the, the application being a section 73, you can only consider the question of the condition and that relates to the importation of timber. And clearly the, the purpose of what we're doing with that condition is trying to limit the intensification and by that, by extension, the impact on the highway network. So I would warn you, it's not what you said, but I warn you against restricting the total number of movements for stop across the site because there are movements that go beyond the scope of this condition. Chairman, but if what I could... is within scope is the importation of timber. Yes, Chairman, I recognise that and that's why I yeah. said the maximum number of journeys into site carrying lumber, yeah. not, not doing yeah. any other thing. 
that that maybe just needed to run this business because uh, I'm very supportive of rural businesses as well, and and, and probably this one. Uh, I'm just conscious that if, can we put an amendment in that maximizes the number of journeys into the site carrying lumber, no matter what type of vehicle it's on, and given that uh, a maximum a month. And if that can be agreed in principle, as I said, I'm repeating myself, but I think it's worth repeating, that I'd be very happy for the applicant and the officers to agree the number. Uh, you, I thought you were very clear with that, Councillor Law. Perhaps as he has his hand up, uh, I'll go back to Mr Dowding uh, for comments, and perhaps he'd also care to comment on, on the fact that his, uh, in the report, uh, it, as Councillor Law rightly pointed out, the focus is on HGVs, should it not be on total movements, including traffic, uh, uh, sorry, tractors with trailers l full of lumber? Mr. Dowding, can you assist? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was going to actually, actually, my hand was up because a HCV is actually defined as a vehicle which has a gross weight of over three and a half tons as a combined vehicle. So that would actually include a tractor and trailer. Um, so I hope we're not mixing HCVs and as just a lorry with a with a tractor uh, because a HCV can be a tractor, it can be a lorry. It can actually be a large van towing a trailer. Um, not, I'm not sure Mr. Wakeling would therefore be happy on that definition to accept uh, one per week. No, that's, that's what I thought I'd just uh, throw that into the mix for you. Um, well, well, I think we've learned something there because I confess to you that I was under the misapprehension. It was a big 40 ton lorry, effectively, uh, not what you've just described. Now, there are different classes of HCV. There's a class from three and a half ton to 12 ton and then 12 ton over. Um, so, um, yes, I, I, I do wonder whether or not, in hindsight, that, that condition possibly does need to be changed. Let's see how we go. Councillor Lord, any quest further questions at this point? Now you've got new knowledge, as we all have. <laughs> no, I, no, I, th I think my position is quite clear on this, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Macro. Thank you, Mr Chairman. My, my first question was kind of related to that, so I'll, I'll, I'll avoid asking that one. The second one was, would it be possible if we if we are minded to approve this application to put a time limit on the arrival of and departure of uh, large vehicles. Because I'm particularly worried about uh, uh, HGVs or whatever, or, or tractors or trailers for that matter, uh, trundling down that lane at, at school when children are walking to and from the school bus. Right, Mr. Drill, Mr. Oh. Butler, can you can't, assist sir. with that? Do you want so in, in principle, um, if you consider that necessary, then yes, but again, I'll just stress it would only be in relation to the importation of timber, not general movements. Okay. A a any further questions, Councillor Macro? Councillor McKinnon, is that a new hand or...? It is. It's or... just a clarification one, really. Um, the importation of timber, I think we've established, can happen on an HGV, an LGV or a tractor or trailer. It's, it's basically taking lumber into the yard is, is the importation of timber. Is, is, is that right? I've, I've got that definition okay? Yeah, but Bob's nodding, which is good. Beyond, beyond the remits of the the the, the forestry operational site. Yeah. Right, and then you've mentioned that a few times uh, tonight. So the current forestry operation, does that involve dragging huge trees into the yard as well? How can we distinguish between importation of timber and the, the, yeah. the, the extant forestry operation? If I can answer that. The, if you go back to the original permission in November for the biomass ball and the storage container, now I don't know the exact percentages and I'm not sure if the applicant would, but a percentage of the wood actually grown on the site and then processed through that would, as Bob said, or we say, uh, be permitted development forestry operations. But um, it's the additional importation of lead lumber as per this condition where that process goes beyond the GPDO and therefore that's why a planning application is required and hence we can control it by condition. I probably haven't explained that very well but no I think you have actually so <laughs> the the wood that's grown in the site that gets brought into the yard it's, it's not yeah. all surrounded in the yard so that that, that causes yeah. it 
So I, I guess the question is, and you might not have an answer for it, is how do we distinguish between wood that's been grown in the site and wood that's been imported in from elsewhere? I think... Um, could, could, I, could I help on that? Just Ross, if you... Chairman, may I? Uh, you may cancel or if you can... Uh, uh, yeah, thanks, Speaker Ross. The, 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 the stuff that's done on site... Uh, the, the lumber is coming from the, the site. The lumber that's processed as part of the planning permission has already been given does not go out of the site and uh, other than when it's all cut up into pieces. Uh, it does not it does not have to be brought in by these HGVs or by tractors or these long trailers. Okay. Mr. Dre is dying to say something to that, I think. Uh, and it also hopefully helped Councillor McKinnon that Condition four on page 17, which is the recommendation, it does include um, the requirement that a delivery log is maintained on site and kept available so that if we suspect there's an issue, we have that as an extra um, tool in order to check on whether there's an enforcement issue. And that's an approach that's quite commonly done on minerals and waste sites, for example. So it's it, that's common practice. So that would help in differentiating. Right. Thank you. Are you happy with that, Councillor McKinnon? Right, Councillor Mays. Thank you, Chairman. My question really is how many tonnes of wood come in on an HGV, whether it's an articulated, whether it's 12 tonnes, three and a half tonnes, or in excess of 12 tonnes, and how much comes in on a tractor? I don't know the, the weight of the wood that would come in on the tractor that we've seen in the yard. You know, how many tonnes of wood is on that tractor? Is it 10 tonnes or 5 tonnes? I have no idea. I don't know if our officers can assist, but let's try them. Um, I couldn't give you an accurate figure. I mean, it'd be the only way to do that is to ask the applicant because it's rather difficult. Uh -huh. So, um, no, it's no, I wouldn't be able to give you an accurate figure, sorry. Uh, and I'm afraid the applicant, not trying to be awkward, but he has spoken uh, and our constitution does not allow him to re-speak. Um, and, and he did, I believe I'm just being reminded that it, it, it is variable, which I think is your point, Councillor Mays. Uh, it, it's variable depending on the size of the units bringing it in. So clearly bigger lorries would weigh more. So uh, how heavy is a tree? I don't know. It can be <laughs> fairly heavy. Right. Are there any other questions for officers before I ask you someone to start the debate? I see no more hands, so who's going to start the debate? Well, someone has to. Oh, Councillor Sumner. Thank you, Chairman. I've been quite quiet this evening, actually. It's been quite interesting listening to the conversations that are going, going backwards and forwards. Um, there's a couple of things that I've looked at. The information with regards to vehicle movements is, is in itself quite interesting. Um, and I've just picked three random dates looking at the, do the document that's on the, on the, web, on the planning portal. Um, one had four out of eight with lumber, one had five out of 14 with, with lumber, and one had nine, uh, one out of nine with lumber. Added to that some days in between where there were gaps of five days with no traffic at all. Um, basically works out just using the ones that I've picked at random as about a third that are carrying lumber. Um, that's, that's very unscientific. I should throw in. Um, but I suppose my point on this is uh, again, a couple of things that have been mentioned. Firstly, that this isn't the only this this operation isn't the only user of that road there are other vehicles that have been noted um some quite large by the sound of it some exactly the same potentially by the sound of it um and my question i suppose really is if i lived in that area with with those sort of businesses around and with farms around would i not expect tractor trailer movements to be going on anyway and i'm kind of thinking i would without any pun intended um so it's it, it's difficult for me to identify a greater restriction than there is currently suggested without permanent officer enforcement sitting on the corner of the road. Um, and that's not going to happen. So I think what, what's been put down, and, and as Mr. Dre has just said, with the, the additional um, recording of movements, I, I, for me at the moment, I think this is probably is as good as we can get to provide some sort of reassurance without restricting this business to the point of strangulation. Thank you, Chairman. Right, Councillor Macro. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When, when I drove to the site visit, so I approached it from the Chapel Row direction. And uh, after I'd been going a little while, there's a, a couple of ladies walking along the road uh, abreast um, on my side of the road, which is not correct, of course. <laughs> and there was a vehicle coming the other way. And so I couldn't overtake the ladies because I'd become very close to this vehicle coming out of, and it restricted where I could pause for this other vehicle to pass. And I was very dubious about whether that should be space. There, there was, in fact, but it is, it's very, very narrow. Um, and to remind myself, I've been looking at the site on uh, Google Street View, and uh, there are some places along that stretch which are very narrow, and some places have a wall at the side, some places have a tree on both sides of the road. So it would, you know, and there's no passing places. Uh, so it would be very, very difficult for uh, if a, uh, a large articulated lorry is tunneling along there, or even the, the tractor and trailer, and a vehicle wants to pass. Um, and uh, I'm particularly worried about what might happen when children are walking to and from to catch the school bus. Uh, so if we, uh, as I've mentioned before, if we are minded to approve this, I would, uh, uh, I would like some kind of condition to restrict the hours. Um, on the other hand, of course, as, as Councillor Sumner says, other people are using this road, and I, I no doubt in the summer there'll be farmers trundling along there with large trailers full of stacks of straw. No? <laughs> Certainly there are other roads in the area. Um, but of course, when this happens, it's uh, not just a question of being difficult to pass, but it does build up uh, frustration in uh, some drivers, which can lead to um, dangerous driving. So um, I'm, uh, like many uh, people here, I think I'm a little bit uh, undecided on this one at the moment. And I will listen to the rest of the debate. Okay, thank you. Councillor Law. Thanks again, Chairman. Uh, I totally concur with uh, Councillor Sumner's views. Uh, you know, we don't want to strangle this business. Uh, and uh, if you live in a rural uh, se setting, like the, the lane that we're talking about, uh, uh, as in fact the number of us do, you know, you do expect to see tractors. Unfortunately, they're all getting bigger and bigger as the years go by, but we all expect to see them. And we do expect to see the occasional HGV go down roads that you might think <laughs> possibly should have been restricted, but they do happen. It's fa fact of life of living where we live in, in a rural environment. So I, I'm very supportive of this of rural business. And, you know, you can't have, <laughs> you can't have more of a rural business than, than this business. You know, it's taking forestry, it's taking lumber and it's processing it, drying it and what have you. So I, I'm very supportive of it. I'm just concerned Actually, I'm very supportive of this, the officer's recommendation here as well. I'm just concerned that we've had a little bit of confusion on previous applications about definitions of movement, and I'd like them clarified this time. So I would like to make a proposal, Chairman, that we accept the officer's recommendation, but I'd like to change uh, uh, condition four uh, to the following. No more than X, and I'll leave X to be decided, deliveries of lumber delivered to the site to be dried and or processed on the application site shall take place in any given month. So that's no more than X deliveries of lumber to, to the site in any given month. We might want to put a sentence in there to, to, to define what we mean by delivery. We could say it's by, by tra tractor trailer or by HGV, or as, uh, 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 as Gareth Downing has said, we could maybe even define the types of HGV. I don't really care. I think that's the essence of it. Um, and if we can agree that, you know, it, it, it seemed to me that something like about 24 overall, but this is just me, but I'd like the applicant and the officers to be happy. It would seem to me that about around about 24 odd uh, movements per month is just below one a day, which seemed to be reasonable and would not would encourage his business and not strangle it. But I'd like to leave that to the officers and the applicant to agree the particular number. And I think I'm supportive. I, 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 I'm, I'm hoping that what I've just said is a, a valid legal proposal. Well, before I ask for a seconder, which I would normally do with a proposal being made, I will seek either planning officer or legal advice, because what happens if X is 
grows to 3x or 4x, uh, where, where does it stop? Um, so, Mr. Dre, can you assist? Because this is this is quite an unusual position that I think is being recommended, even though, of course, was is crystal clear. It's just we don't know the meaning of x. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the, the condition that Council Law read out um, works fine. No more than one. Uh, sorry, no, sorry, excuse me. No more than X deliveries of lumber to be to the site, and then it, you've changed week for month to presumably allow for more flexibility on when those movements occur across time. Um, and you could add into your resolution, delegate to officers to agree what X is. I think that's all clear. Um, but I would agree it would be helpful if there is any way we can have some kind of, you, can, you could choose to delegate to us and that would be procedurally fine and we could discuss it with the agent, but it's whether you want to give us some kind of steer as to what level that would be. Yeah, I, I think that's the only fear that, that could be for anyone listening in as to, well, how big is, is, is your magic X? Um, uh, if it goes above that, is that a step too far? Uh, or, or if it is in built too low, as far as the applicant is concerned, um, is, does that make his business less viable? So can, you were giving a bit of a clue about a number you had in your mind. I'm absolutely not watch, wishing to put words in your mouth, but if there is any further clarity you could give, then I will ask for a seconder. I'm sorry, Chairman, are you asking me that question? I was Councillor Law, yes. Sorry, I I mean, can you put a, a you, you were alluding to the fact that you were trying to put a, a, a figure on yeah, X. But, but a you know, you know I'm, I'm not the expert here and I haven't got, I, I, and it's what's interesting is neither the applicant nor anybody observing it seems to have an actual clue as to how many movements are taking place. Okay, so I think you need to put some heads around this. Uh, better heads than me. If, if, if you know, the, the the highways officer also seems to be happy with one movement a day. You know, he said that you know you really couldn't turn that down. It would be it'd be appealed. So I would have thought if you know, it, 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 I, I like the point that uh, the, uh, Bob Dre said. You know, delegate it to the applicant and the officers to agree what X is. If it's too low, the applicant will appeal. Yeah. Very true. All right, Councillor Law, you made your point. I do understand where you're coming from. Mr. Dre, then I will seek a second. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, considering that further, as, as Councillor Law was speaking, um, the condition has two purposes. In, one in terms of, obviously, highway safety, but also in terms of controlling the intensity mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become a material change of use and it remains at a level that is ancillary. So hopefully it's reassuring that from that point of view alone, we would be wanting to keep the number relatively low. Okay, if that helps, does that Council Law's proposal find a seconder? And could, I, could you someone stick their hand? I've got the various Zoom hands up. Could someone put their hand physically up? Councillor Mays, I see your hand. Right, I'm going to still take, there are various people wishing to speak. I will then come back to you, Councillor Mays. So, Councillor McKinnon first. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the applicant in his statement earlier on said that he took delivery of six loads of timber per year. And I pushed him on that and he stuck to it. And he said that the criticism of that in the report by officers was based on a log which mistook various other movements in and out of the site. It was, it was him and his tractor going about his business. The applicant himself has said six per year. Now, the condition here is talking about HGV deliveries to the site, um, so no more than one in any, any given week. Now, I'd be delighted with that as a as a condition. I would have some doubts about enforcement of it and a, a doubt, doubts of a bit as, uh, about its realism, given some of the movements in the log, because there's more than six HGVs on this log straight away. Um, you can just ha have a skim down it. So, I mean, I guess another question to the officer is, you, if we were to approve this as is tonight, could that be appealed? Could that condition then be appealed given we've just approved it? Yeah, Chairman, the condition could be appealed. Um, I would also, it might be, um, was it? Yeah, I had, you just took another point that you just, I might, in the moment, sorry, yeah. But the, the, the applicant said himself, six big loads per year. HGVs. Yeah. I'm not sure he said that. He said six can loads. I, yeah. Chairman, can I help there? Mr. Butler, can you help? Yeah. Um, 
Mr. Trey is exactly right. If, if permission is granted tonight with this condition, uh, the applicant can appeal that condition as with any other conditions. But the point being is on the application file as an audit trail and a public record, there is an email from the applicant accepting that the wording of that condition. And therefore his chances at appeal would be uh, considerably, <laughs> considerably less, considerably low. The reason as case officer on this application, I have recommended this condition and I understand the debate that's gone on is that it is in my professional view, and I'm not a highways expert, but I've got a fair degree of knowledge of highways. It is a reasonable compromise between uh, three things, the survival of the business, as we're all seeking to support, road safety for obvious reasons, and of course, residential amenity. Uh, and I still stand by my recommendation. Of course, it can be varied. That's fine. That's the obvious prerogative of members, clearly. But uh, I think I still say it is a reasonable compromise. Thank you, Chairman. Right, well, that's helpful, Mr. Butler. And as you say, if this is something that has been agreed, I, I just, uh, Councillor McKinnon. Yeah, okay, so um, just my contribution then to the debate. I'm, I'm not sure I'm with Councillor Law on this, um, which is unusual, but um, given that if we accept the condition as is, one HGV delivery in any given week, that's 52 per year. Now, given what the applicant said earlier on, and given what Mr. Butler just said there helpfully, I think that should be more than sufficient uh, for us to support tonight. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm minded to support the condition as recommended by the officer. We do have, however, a, a, slightly, diff a slightly different recommendation, which has been seconded. So, uh, but I, I, I'm sure members have heard your words. Councillor Somner. Um, thank you, Chairman. Just a, just a couple of thoughts in continuation of, of the conversation. So, Councillor McKinnon quite rightly mentioned um, the number of HGVs that are listed. I, what I do see, though, is one in particular I can find going in. I can't find it going out, um, which is, you know, just the way that the, the log's being um, put together. But there are also HGVs, large HGVs, with equipment on um potentially once only visits um and and we are the issue as i understand it is about the wood coming in not just general movements um and again just just another thought just just to play devil's advocate on this um if an hgv delivery was to be dropped further afield let's say not on site um but easily reachable by a trailer tractor then i would assume that the number of trailer tractor trips would go up considerably in volume if the, the, the owner were minded to have a delivery put somewhere else. Um, but one could say that one larger delivery is actually better for the environment um, and better for the business. Just wanted to put that out there for consideration, Chairman. Thank you. Well, 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 thank you for that. But you've confused me now because I thought we had established that tractor trailers were HGVs. Perhaps I got that wrong. Mr. Dowdy, can you just clarify? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, a tractor trailer weighing over three and a half tonnes would, by definition, be classified as a HGV. Well, I think what, in this case, a tractor trailer and a lorry uh, the lorry is being classified as a HCV in, in this argument, and that the tractor trailer is being classified as not a HCV. And, and interesting also, Chairman, if I can bolt onto the back of that, of course, that in, in trucking circles, a tractor trailer would be an HGV. Well, and that's the not point. a farm tractor with a trailer on it. You know, they, they are regarded as tractor trailers. That's, that's what they are. So we do need to be very careful with the definitions on this. Yeah. And what I'm looking at is an HGV loaded with wood coming into that site to deliver wood that isn't normally part of the, the standard operation of this organisation. Now, I, I take your point, and that's why I was seeking professional gu officer guidance who has just said that anything over a certain weight was considered to be an HGV, but I don't want to go around in circles on this. Um, Councillor Macro. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I agree with Councillor Law, actually, that, that I think it's just as important to control the number of 
a tractor trailer movements, whether you class them as HGVs or not. But also, of course, if uh, if they are HGVs, then the, the condition would put, put the company out of business, I think. Um, so uh, I'm with Council Law on that one. But I would also like to change the condition to control the R's so that we don't have these vehicles, large vehicles, tunneling up and down there when children are using the road to get to and from school. So I would suggest that they should should uh, only um, access the site between the RSA of uh, 9am and uh, 3pm. Okay, well, uh, before I go to Councillor Mays, Councillor Law, would you be happy to incorporate that hour restriction in your proposal? Uh, probably yes. I can see where I, I, I can see where Councillor Macro is coming from. Um, but not, not, <laughs> where I'm thinking about is nine o'clock. Uh, you know, they're still the kids are still passing my house at nine, going to school. Some of them. Uh, what's that? In this case, they've got to catch the bus to get to school. So I think the school starts by nine. So yeah, they should have finished by nine. Yeah, but uh, I'll defer to the local member if that's not okay. Yeah, okay. I think what we're trying to do, I think, we're is to get this balance of uh, you know, amenity. Uh, against the, the the business need yeah uh, and uh yeah I, i'd be happy to do that i can i could amend that to what uh, councillor micro said well that's very kind thank you for that councillor mays you are next to speak but could i just ask you to address in that you seconded the council law's proposal whether you'd be happy to take in that time restriction too yes i would do you wish to speak further if you want me to talk about everything else, yeah, my way of working it out was basically accepting the one per week heavy HGV lorry, whether it's articulated or rigid, and then going to the tractor and trailer, that would be, say, five a week, which is four a month, which gives us a total of about, as Council Law said, about 24, 25 a month in total. We could put that in as guidance, couldn't we, to the office? I would think so, yeah. Right, members, uh, I'm happy with that one. You're happy with that one. Right, I, I'm trying to seek clarification um, before I go to the vote, because I think we're getting a little confused about what is an HGV and what is not. And we've heard from Mr. Dowding that anything over there are use, sorry, there are categories of HGV over three and a half tons. Chairman, uh, as a proposal, no, may I clarify that? Yeah, please, please do, Council. Because Lord. my proposal actually does not mention the word HGV. I defined it as deliveries of lumber. You did indeed, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, because because of this difficulty. And, and, and if I could just say to, to my friend uh, Ross sitting beside me here, if we were to go with his recommendation uh there's nothing to stop the applicant actually doing 10 journeys a day on his tractor because all we're controlling is the, the lorry aspect of the hgv and we therefore have to we would really have to put definitions of hgv down for this which is why i said deliveries of lumber not you you, you do the council law and i'm just going to seek further one more last clarification from mr dre before i go to the vote on this mr dre thank you hopefully this is a suggestion for the proposal that might help resolve this if um councillor law and uh councillor mays are willing to just amend it to delegate the ability to us to also vary the wording of the conditions slightly so if through our negotiations over the number we agree that it's not just the total number but it's say one hgv one tractor trailer a day uh, or within a certain time scale just give us the delegate the authority to make minor amendments to the wording of the condition as well well we've got to move this forward somewhat i think that sounds quite sensible mr dre and i'm happy you're happy. Councillor Mays as a seconder. Right, members, I think now there is further clarification. You have gained further clarification uh, on what is proposed, uh, which involves delegating to officers for negotiation. May I see those in favour? Please put your hands in front of the Zoom hand. Oh, sorry, in front of your Zoom camera. Chairman, sorry, could I 
Can we actually have the condition as it now stands read out, please? All right. Mr. Dre, can you assist? Or Mr. Butler? Oh, I've got it. Right, Mr. Dre has it. Thank you. No more than X deliveries of lumber to the site. Um, to be dried and or processed on the application site shall take place in any given month. A delivery log shall be maintained on site and made available for inspection by the local planning authority upon request. And also the restriction of the hours was um, that, so it would read along the lines of uh, no lumber delivery shall take place um, outside of the hours of 9 to 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on any given day. And that's delegating the authority to officers to agree what X is and allow us to make mi minor amendments to the precise wording in case, for example, that um, there's a nuance there in the types of vehicles that we allow. Okay. Thank Are you. you happy with that, Councillor Sonner? Right. Thank you, Chair. If you're now crystal clear, members, may I see those in favour, please? I see. One... One, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven. Uh, and I am uh, unusually going to abstain from this. I think it's more appropriate that I do. Uh, but conditional permission is granted along the lines that we have sought clarification of restricting hours and uh, ne negotiation by officers. So members, we got somewhere in the end and thank you very much indeed. Uh, members, I would then to ask you to uh, note for next time, the next meeting is scheduled to be the 20th of April, which would mean site visits in the morning still, I think. It's sort of dark, uh, getting on for eight o'clock. I think we can revert to evening meetings soon, but I would suggest, unless you tell me otherwise, that we probably stick with the morning of the 13th, but I'm in your hands. What do you say? Uh, hands up for morning of the 13th. I know it's awkward for some. Okay. Right. Uh, perhaps after that, in May, for two or three months, we, we can try to accommodate those who have to work for their livings and revert back to evenings. <laughs> right. Without further ado, I think we're done. So, members, could I just ask you please to wait till the live stream has stopped and perhaps we could be advised.